एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम when the object uh, when the particles they are moving in the one dimensional box and their potential is continuously changing so that means motion of the particle that will be get affected that will be in the complex manner how we can solve the motion of that particle we know that the motion of the particle that can be solved by using the schrodinger wave equation now for the simplicity we are considering the particle is moving in the one dimensional box and when its potential is continuously changing how we can define its motion so that can be that its motion that can be defined in terms of transverse matrix so transfer matrix that is used in order to define the motion of the particle in the complex manner if you want to study this topic in detail refer to the book by s john publishing link is provided in the description box so oh, so let us begin this topic uh, myself dr narendra kaur and welcome to s chand academy we will begin the transfer matrix method so the transfer matrix method so that is a numerical method for solving one dimensional schrodinger wave equation and other similar equations uh, that means of, uh, that is used in order to uh, describe the motion of the particle in the 1d box one dimensional box means only part potential of the particle that will be get changed in the one dimensional only and other similar equations for example we can uh, use a hydrogen wave problem or the helium gas problem that can also be used uh, can be solved by using the transfer matrix method now in this method the wave function at each point is decomposed into two complex number So why how we can decompose this uh, complex number into two wave number because we are taking either the positive energy of the particle and negative energy of the particle because the potential of the particle that is continuously changing in this box so either it is having a positive value or it is having a negative value so depending upon that whether it is uh, in the positive potential uh, box or in the negative potential box so depending upon that the complex wave function so wave function of the particle that can be divided into the two components and when it is divided into two components and we want to solve this equation properly the two cross two matrix that is get formed and this kind of matrix that is known as a transverse matrix so now some of the uh, terms are new over here one is a one dimensional schrodinger wave equation second one is a wave function so what are the these uh, equations over uh, components over here now one dimensional uh, schrodinger wave equation one dimensional schrodinger wave equation this equation is required in order to describe the particle in the 1d box so for simplicity we are considering over here when the particle is described only a one dimensional box with a positive potential then is schrodinger wave equation that can be written as so this is a schrodinger wave equation of the particle so that means that is written as so this is a schrodinger wave equation for the particle when it is moving in one d box now what is v here so this is a applied potential of the particle now when this potential is applied to the particle and it start moving in this box this energy of the particles that will be continuously changing so depending upon the different value of e so these are known as a energy eigen value of the particle and m it is known as a mass of the particle now what is psi over here so psi basically describes the function this is known as a wave function of particle psi it is known as wave function of the particle now this wave function of the particle because for motion of the particle in this box a uh, small things are required because let us suppose when the particle is moving in the x axis 
Now, how we can describe its motion? So, its motion that can be described in terms of distance or displacement or we can take x over here. But now we know that as a particle is moving in this box, so there comes a concept of de Broglie, according to which when the particles are moving inside any box or inside any potential, they having the waves associated with them. So that means it is not a simple motion like this or we are taking the displacement or distance over here. So that means there occur waves are associated with the particle. So due to waves associated with the particle, we are taking a wave function over here. So psi, this is known as a wave function or which should describe the motion of the waves which are associated with the moving particles. So these are known as the waves over here which are associated with the particle and psi is known as wave function. So psi is known as a wave function. While the wave function psi, it does not have any physical significance. We know that x that is known as a distance or displacement. Now derivative of x when it is taken with respect to time, it will give us the velocity. So these terms has a physical significance. While the wave function psi, it does not have any physical significance. So in order to describe it physically and give it some physical significance, instead of wave function psi, we are taking psi into psi star because psi is a complex quantity over here. Psi is a complex. It can be written as A e raised per ieta omega t. By ieta, it will represent a quantity in the complex form. So that means it has a complex component as well as real component. So that's why we are taking here psi into psi star. So psi into psi star into dv. So this is known as a probability density over here. So what is that? What does it mean? That means if the particle is moving in this box in some under some potential, and we know that as a particle is moving, also waves are associated with the particle. Both are moving in this case. So particle is moving, waves are associated with the particle. They will remain in this box only. That means we are able to find out the particle within this box. So this term is known as a probability density function over here. So by this we are able to describe the probability of the finding in this box over here. So these are the two components which are used in order to describe the motion of the particle. So this is the Schrodinger wave equation over here. So now that means a wave component in one dimensional. For simplicity, we are taking motion of the particle that is along the one dimensional only. So this is a Schrodinger wave equation over here. What is m? That is the mass of the particle. Psi x that is a wave function. For our simplicity, we are considering the motion of particle along x axis only. And then vx that is a potential function which is applied over here. E that is the energy. Now E that is uh, taken as an adjustable parameter. Now why this is so? Because the energy E of the particle, when we are calculating energy of the particle for this simple box, E value that is comes to be equal to n square h square by 8 ml square. What is L here? That is the length of the box in which the particle is said to be present over here. So now that means so depending upon the n, what is n here? This is a principal quantum number. So n is known as principal quantum number. Now the value of n that can be taken from 1, 2, 3 and so on. It can never be 0. So that means its value, minimum value of the energy means when the particle is moving in the box and it is having some potential, the energy of the particle that can never be 0 means n it will start value from 1, 2, 3 and so on. So depending upon the value of n, the energy of the particle which is moving in this box that can be adjusted over here. So that now, when if we want to plot this value because E versus n, so its variation that is parabolic over here. That means E n, because it depends upon n, we can write it as n square h square by 8 m l square. 
So that means it is x square by 8 ml square into n square. So E n it is proportional to n square. So this variation is parabolic over here. So now that means this variation that is parabolic over here. So energy of the particle that can be defined like this. So that means if the wave function of the particle is moving like here. So the particle it shows a parabolic variations over here. Now if this is a wave function of the particle then probability density of the particle that can be defined like this. The probability density of the particle that can be given by again there is a parabolic variations are there. So this is the first wave function and that will be the second wave function for the particle. So this is a psi 2 and that will be the psi 1 and the psi function that will be given by a sin n pi x by l also the wave function depends upon the value of n so it can be written as psi n so this is a wave function for the particle so now that means within the given range of the space where v is our constant and the Schrodinger wave equation that can re reduce to one dimensional Helmholtz equation so that means the journal equation of the particle that can be written like this. We, we know that the wave function of the particle that is a complex. So it is a combination of one portion A e raised per eta k. That will define the wave function in the positive x axis where the energy of the particle is positive. And while this is defined for the negative x axis where uh, it represents energy value that will be around, along, along the when energy E that is less than V, so in that case its wave function is termed to be negative. And what is K that is a propag propagation constant for the wave. So it is taken as 2 m E raised to E minus V x by h bar square. So that is a propagation constant for the value. So what does it mean? That means when E is positive, then wave number of the particle that is real and it has positive values. While when this exponential that means, uh, uh, so what does it mean? We know that the motion of the particle that the wave function of the particle that describes the motion of the particle in the box and that is divided into two components, a real component or the right hand side component, second one is along the left hand side component. So that means it can be divided into positive plus negative. So wave function that is written as a raised per eta kx that is along the positive x axis and this that is along the negative x axis. So what does that mean? Means when energy of the particle that is positive. So energy E is more than V. Then v what is V here? V is the applied potential for the particle. If E is more than V, so in this case k that is real and positive. Propagation constant is positive. Physically, we can see that the motion of the particle that is possible, that can be possible. While when E is less than V, that means energy of the particle that is less than the applied potential. So in that case, K is imaginary and that will be negative. A is imaginary and negative means motion of the particle that is not possible. So this is the value of propagation constant over here. So now let us take a short break over here. So now we understood what is the uh, motion of the particle in the one dimensional box. So depending upon the value of E, whether it is positive uh, more than positive potential or it is less than the potential for the apply potential which is applied to the box, the wave function of the particle that can be divided into two components. Thank you. Now quality learning is easily available at your doorstep. S. Chand Academy brings detailed lectures based on AICTE curriculum as per the new education policy 2020. So do not forget to subscribe to the S. Chand Academy and access the wide world of knowledge conveniently sitting at your home. Stay connected and keep watching S. Chand Academy. Happy learning! Welcome back to S. Chand Academy. Now before break we understood what is the motion of the particle in the one dimensional box having energy more than the applied potential and less than the applied potential. 
now we will describe the transverse matrix by which the motion of the particle under the complex analysis that can be understood uh, that can be understood over here so now we know that when uh, again here when e is positive then k is taken as real and the positive value so that means this is represent the positive a function and when e is less than v k can have imaginary and the negative value so this represent over here the negative wave function so that means now this problem statement for the uh, transverse matrix method that can be explained as so for that potential applied in the box that has to be varied Mean, means uh, now the last one we understood the one dimensional box when the potential v is applied only there the potential is fixed now what will happen when the potential is continuously changing so in that case it is very difficult to solve the schrodinger wave equation properly for the particle so that's why there becomes uh, the solution in terms of transverse matrix method so in this case the potential is applied to the particle and that is continuously changing over here so here this is a v1 that is a negative potential which is applied to the particle this is again positive v3 is again negative but with some different value to v1 so these are the different potentials which are applied to the particle now the solution of the schrodinger wave equation that can be given over here now in the form of matrix so here the potential which is applied to the particle that is v1 v2 v3 and so on so these different regions of space that can be explained as follows that means now so the potential which is applied to the particle over here so that can be changed like this now the potential at each and every point that is different for the both of the particle now here is a v1 again this is v2 v3 and v4 now the schrodinger wave equation if we write over here here wave function it depends only on the x component because for simplicity we are considering the particle is moving only in the x axis now when it is solved for the first component here this potential v1 if this is a zero over here then this is a negative value of the potential which is applied then motion of the particle that will be different over here again particle has to trap or it has to tunnel from v1 to v2 when particle tunnel from v1 to v2 where v2 it is a positive potential which is applied to the particle so depending upon the positive potential motion of the particle and energy associated with the particle that will become different now again it has to tunnel from v2 to v3 again v3 has some negative value uh, but it well its value is positive as comparison to v1 again its motion will be different as comparison to its motion in the potential well v1 again for the v4 and so on so that means the particle when it tunnel from one potential to the another potential with a different value and different signs the motion of the particle that will be disturb so that will be in the complex manner so that now in order to solve the motion of the particle transverse matrix method that is applied over here so now the motion of the particle that will be described in terms of some matrix that matrix is now given by this one so psi b so that will represent for the positive x b values and psi a that will represent for the positive and the negative x axis so wave function that will be described by psi b which is equals to m that is a matrix which depends upon the two variable x x is the displacement so we consider the motion of the particle in the now the motion of the particle that is taken in these two regions one is x a and second one is x b so boundaries these are described over here in if there is very difficult to describe at motion of the particle at each and every point in order to describe this within the given region we set up here the two boundary limits so these are the two boundary limits over here one is the x a and second one is the x b 
so these two boundary limits are now used in order to describe the motion of this particle in the variable potential where this m it will represent the matrix for the particle in the two boundary limits x b and x a and psi a that is a wave function of the particle initially and psi b what is the wave function of the particle at the final point so we describe over here two boundary limits one is a x a and second boundary limit is a x b because it is difficult to describe the motion of the particle at each and every point so in the summarized way the up on the boundary condition at the first point the wave function is c and at the last point the wave function is c then this wave function that can be described in terms of matrix method where m is a mat 2 by 2 cross matrix into wave function is a psi b over here so depending upon this matrix the motion of the particle that can be described within at each and every point of to the given uh, boundaries over here so that can be described now this two, 2 by 2 cross matrix that is called the transfer matrix and now in order to construct this transfer matrix we know that the simplest possible case again we will summarize this equation into the single point because it is very difficult to solve the motion of the particle in the complete potential box having the different potentials or variable potential at each and every point so this can be solved by taking the constant potential v everywhere so this is the first assumption so these are the some assumptions by which we consider that instead of variable potential at each and every point the particle is moving with the constant potential everywhere within the two different points one is x a and that is a x b where x b is more than x a then then equation that can be taken as a simple form now so this assumption that can be described as that means instead of variable potential so it is described that the potential is constant everywhere so if this limit is x a and that limit is x b now we want to describe the motion of the particle in the constant potential and that is very easy to describe so again the wave function so that is known as can be written as a e raised power eta k s positive value and negative value where this is a value of k now the wave component of these two positions that can be written as now psi a so this is for the positive and that is for the uh, that is for the initial limit and this is for the final limit where each component of psi b this is the exponential so that means the psi b it has value eta k into x b minus x a because this is the difference between these two initial and the final point is taken over here and m0 xl at the initially when instead of a so if a point initially is taken to the origin to the zero point then the transfer matrix m0 kl that can be written as so the transfer matrix now we replace if re, uh, we shifted this initial point to origin so that means if a is shifted to origin over here then the transfer matrix that can be written as so simply this is very simple this is a 2 by 2 cross matrix or you can see that this is a diagonal matrix over here so it is very easy to solve this matrix so that can be easily solved and potential box is taken with this length L and you can see that xb minus xa that is taken equals to L when we shift this A starting point to the origin point. So this is a transfer matrix method so that can be given over here. Now again this is a 2 by 2 cross matrix so by this according to this matrix it is seen that it is able for the for particle to cross this point so that means when the particle is moving in this box with the constant potential uh, all over there when the potential is positive over there 
the motion of the particle because at this point the potential is now here x is 0 and x is L so within this boundary condition particle is not able to trap from point A to point B it is not able to tunnel from this boundary limits the particle will remain trapped within this limit L so that means the particle will be trapped over here for the particle to get tunnel from this point to here and from this point to in this side from left side and right side the motion of the particle that can be described in the form of transverse matrix and that transfer matrix is given by ms k positive and negative that means the propagation constant for the given matrix that can have positive value and the negative value and the finally the transfer matrix that will be written as ms k positive and negative half of this value so this is known as the transverse matrix method by which motion of the particle that can be described in the given uh, in the given potential box and potential which is applied to the box that is variable because this is simplest form that can be extended to the variable form so potential of the particle that can be changed from positive to negative so that can be understood like this that means now the particle when it is moving over here So that means the simple motion of the particle with negative potential here it is this negative positive again negative and positive and negative so on so when the particle is moving in this variable potential the motion of the particle that can be described in terms of transfer matrix and the transfer matrix is given by this relation where k positive is defined as propagation constant for the particle in the positive uh, uh, propagation constant in the positive potential and k negative this is defined as the propagation constant for the particle along the negative potential so this is all about the motion of the particle which is described by the one dimensional schrodinger wave equation with the variable potential box means potential it can be either positive or the negative and this can be solved by taking the uh, that can be solved by taking the 2 by 2 cross matrix that matrix is known as transfer matrix thank you if you want to study this topic in detail refer to the book by s john publishing link is provided in the description box if you found our video interesting please like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.